Hey, what's up everyone? We are super excited to announce that we will be making our first appearance on the road in Simpsonville, Kentucky, July 28th and 29th at the Called to Freedom Conference. If you are disentangling your faith after experience in a hyper-fundamentalistic or a legalistic church group, this event is for you. There will be panel discussions, table discussions, inspiring testimonies, all from Christians who have rebuilt their faith. And even a game night, guys. It's a weekend of rebuilding theology, rebuilding community, and rebuilding faith through God's word. So definitely check that out. Also, Jerry and I, we're going to be speaking there, and we're also super excited to meet you in person. You can register for the conference today at bereanholiness.com forward slash conference. That's B-E-R-E-A-N holiness.com forward slash conference. Also, until May 31st, you can use the promo code cultish in all caps at checkout for $50 off the purchase price. We hope to see you there. Now back to the episode. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to another crossover. She Legends and Cultish crossover. Yes, this is the fifth crossover. Wow. What when did we, we do this can other we take a, Can we take a, what, okay, what was our first crossover? Aliens. We, yeah. Aliens. Aliens UFOs. Wait, wait, wait. Can we talk about what babies we were? I don't yeah. even think Andrew was on. No. It was no. Jeff Andrew and Jerry. Was, it was yeah. Jeff and Jerry. We yep. talked about aliens. And then uh, Bob Lazar, right? Yeah, Bob Lazar. And then what did we do? We did, um, was it Handmaid's Tale? Handmaid's Tale. Oh, yes. Was that the Handmaid's second? Tale. Was that the second one? No, we did Handmaid's Tale. Then we did the one on the uh, that weird cult, cult of the mother, lady who- yeah. The mother god cult. Yeah, the one who, yep. the lady who like died and they wrapped her in Christmas lights. <laughs> Colorado. Remember? And then I don't even remember that <laughs> Joy, one. You were there. <laughs> I don't even remember that one at all. Okay, the Mother yeah. God cult. Well, and then uh, the Manson. Manson. Oh yeah. Now yeah. talking about Tom O'Neill. Tom that O'Neill. That was fun. You're and right. Then, yeah. Now this we're one, on to the fifth. Wow. Except for I don't remember doing one of those at all. So like not well, even at all. Like, that's well. That's the funny thing too is that you could probably tell. What me. did I say? Yeah, I'm like that with every. Joy, single you p- said many great things. Yeah. Okay. I don't remember right. any well, of them, but I know. I'm glad. <laughs> That it yeah. happened. <laughs> well, I well, what will happen with me too is that sometimes I will do this um, study for something, and you yeah. just study like probably who knows how many hours, and then you're done with the podcast, and it just feels like this brain dump. Like I have all yeah. this data that <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I'm ever going to use like ever again. And so a lot of times I'll come when I'm done, uh, like when I go when I'm down with a podcast. Yeah. Like I just like lay on my like bed blank and like, it out. Ugh. <laughs> like I just my brain has to decompartmentalize. Someone um, tries to talk to you about it later, and you're like, oh, No, I don't remember. I don't. Any, I yeah. wish I. <laughs> yeah. Wish I had held on to that. Yeah. That yes. been great. When my husband's like, "What did you guys talk about?" I'm like, "You can listen to it. Yeah. Later. I don't know. Well, not just only that. T- tune in. I, I actually have one time <laughs> talking about. You know, months later, and you probably have had this happen too. Where all of a sudden, I got this email from someone, oh. and this was oh. a, this was a year years later. This was a year <laughs> after we did yeah. the Handmaid's Tale. Yeah, and this lady had yeah. this document, I like know. this doctoral thesis laid out with time <laughs> she spent stamps. So much time, like yeah. time stamps, like of when I said this and when you said that, and, yeah. and specifically like episode, the episode like time, like IMDb, like this is the point, this quote, where this person said to this person under his eye, and I'm, uh, I'm like, I don't fine. remember anything. <laughs> I, I, I don't. What am I gonna do with this? So I think. I think I actually sent, I just gave it to uh, Brandy and she actually like sent a message back, like refuting everything that she said and then, and then she never messaged back. So what we're telling you great. guys is we're about to tell you some amazing things. So amazing. We won't remember any of it. <laughs> yes. But what are we going to, we are about to bring the, we forgot. Oh, oh, well, we're putting oh, the, the her, the her in, uh, in network marketer. Neck wor- neck hurt. Network, <laughs> network marketer. Mark market her market her yeah that's what we're doing today. yeah I can't listen believe- this topic is we're obviously not jumping into it yet because <laughs> but um I this is an email that we get that Joy and I get a mm-hmm. lot a please lot. talk about this and I have refused I have absolutely refused Joy has absolutely refused I'm surprised refused. we're even sitting here yeah. <laughs> I'm like oh no <laughs> I have absolutely refused to talk about it um and uh, that's because I think what a lot of people want is some sort of, sort of like sledgehammer to take to their friends the next time they get an obnoxious uh facebook message and 
you know, Joy and I are not in the business of offering hammers to people. Um, so that's one reason why we've never talked about it. But <clears throat> I think we can I think we can do it in a way that will actually be helpful. And yeah. so I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, and I think in the same way too, people have messaged us like, Hey, you're gonna do something that's like MLM related. I'm like, that's kind of I mean, given that we kind of adhere to Walter Martin's definition of the cult model, well, usually it's polarized around a specific religious institution or a charismatic cult leader who's getting revelation from God. This is talking about, this is a business model. and Unfortunately, where, where, some uh, MLMs qualify. It, it could be. But it's like, you can't make a sweeping judgment, which we're no. going to get into. No, you can't. Yeah. But yeah, it, it's been one of those things like, I don't know about that. Like, I don't know if we're going to do a strictly like an Amway episode. Like, I think I had somebody who is a ambassador of like former ambassadors of like Amway want to talk to us. I'm like, I just don't know. But you just said last minute, I'm like, you know what? Let's, let's just tackle it. Let's just, just have a fun it. conversation. Let's just do it. Let's but you know what? You know what? This is the first time that um, we have recorded with you and you've been a married man. Yeah. That's true. Jerry's married. So. Jerry's married. I know. Praise it's God. It's crazy. Yeah, what? I am. Uh, I'm about what is? It? How many months is it? December. I don't know. Yeah, like married five in months being a married man. Yeah. I, I Your actually, marriage is like the same age as my infant. Wow. Which is interesting because I've already pretty much know everything there is to know about marriage. Oh, yeah, I, you really yeah. just. I'm actually. Uh, <laughs> All I'm actually, figured actually, out. Course, I've, All I've, figured I've out. I've actually got a book deal I'm working with uh, with, uh, with Canon Press. They're going to be. Oh. Uh, I would think this there. would be more up Crossways Alley. Oh yeah. Well, <laughs> well you know, yeah, whatever you can do. Um, gotta, gotta take what you can get. <laughs> yeah, yeah, gotta, yeah. Gotta start off somewhere. <laughs> what can. Um, all of us may not consider ourselves experts. I'm pretty sure Andrew has been married. The longest out of uh, how long have you been married, Andrew? 2014. Since 2014. Yeah, you're. I was about to say something dark about myself. Yeah, um, <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> Together, I have. <laughs> yeah, I'm moving on. You're like, well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know he's the longest. But what what Joy and I have recently discovered is that in every marriage, and I I want to know that your you gentlemen's answer to this. In every marriage, there's the there's the perpetually impressed spouse and mm -hmm. the perpetually unimpressed spouse. Um, so in Joy's marriage, she is the unimpressed spouse. Like her husband will tell her he did this amazing thing and mm -hmm. she forgets to like tell her face that it's impressive. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and I do, but it's just not a, like a, <laughs> I am, sometimes I, you know, my, I uh, react appropriately, but then I can't carry that mm -hmm. for like very yeah. long yeah. periods of time which might tell you like how i would speak yes. to myself which is like okay very so so cool that you did that thing now what are you doing right. but yes. then you... then we immediately <laughs> pulled into my driveway and my husband was like jumping a vehicle and i was like oh. <laughs> i have all the manly this. things he can do he can jump a car could real quick <laughs> i was just blown away yeah so was, so which spouse are you are you which spouse me? are you the impressed or the unimpressed spouse jerry i am impressed by how unimpressed my wife is with me all the time <laughs> <laughs> oh oh okay yeah okay we'll have to rehearse that without and just fade the reaction <laughs> okay so which spouse are you are you the impressed spouse or the unimpressed spouse I am in the impressed spouse, but I am impressed by how unimpressed she is of me sometimes. <laughs> and I sometimes, yeah, it's I, I've learned a couple of super like super secret marriage tips that I could share real quick. Well, with I was gonna audience. say, I was gonna say we should all share one. So, you know, it's very easy when you're a Christian to get married and instantly write a book. Oh yeah, of things that, <laughs> or if you're an influencer, like, a, like so, I've been talking right. my influencer. This is what I do with my husband. Uh -huh, and then, yeah, yeah. So first, we have to figure out if Andrew is the impressed or unimpressed. But then I think we should all share one, at least one thing that okay. we, despite all our flaws, <laughs> we absolutely do know, is a good marriage tip. Just one oh, thing okay, that okay. you absolutely know. okay. Andrew, <laughs> so Andrew yeah. yeah, are you the impressed or the unimpressed? I tell I'm the impressed husband because <laughs> yesterday my wife was cooking spaghetti and she made a spaghetti sauce like the way no one makes spaghetti sauce and it turned out so good. Yes. I was extremely impressed. I but I've but I've told my wife about things that I like super passionate about sometimes. She's like, yeah, you know, yeah, that's cool. You know, so I'd call her the unimpressed. Casey, uh, oh, wow. you and me. <laughs> <laughs> I am 
always impressed with Eric. <laughs> Last night, I just like rolled over and he was like reading some really old, dusty book on his phone. Like he found the PDF of it. And I was like, what are you doing? And he was like, I'm reading this thing and it's like it's so old that it's like pdf images of it you uh-huh. can't even like mm. transfer the text or whatever and i was like but what is it and he starts telling me about it and it's the most boring old thing ever and i was just like oh, wow <laughs> I <was> so imp- <laughs> See, <laughs> and he was like what i'm just reading and i was like but but <laughs> i feel like you're directly coming at me because my <laughs> husband's my husband's library is like 25 percent like rare out of print books <laughs> All like, on like plants and wild plants and <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah, he's like, you can't bring food in here. I and I'm like, okay, I all just, right. <laughs> everything yeah. he does, I'm like, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen anyone do. Yeah. So my, and I mean it. <laughs> so my super secret marriage tip oh. is to make sure you always require uh, special attention for the things your wife normally expects you to do on a regular basis. <laughs> this will always keep her reminded of what a catch that you are and the catch that she found. Ugh. Wow. Oh, okay. Gosh. That's. And the second one I would just give We're really praying. quickly. Uh, one, one last. <laughs> mar- for your wife. <laughs> <laughs> one last marriage hack. And I actually uh, shared this one time on, on a video, which my wife has only seen. It's only with her. But the super secret marriage tip is to make sure that you walk in the house with your sho- around the house with your shoes on at least no. once a week. No. Just and this is just it no. serves as a reminder Absolutely to make sure not. that your wife uh, makes sure the floors are cleaned on a regular basis and Absolutely she doesn't forget. <laughs> Absolutely not. No, nope, my husband knows better. Mm-mm. No, <laughs> we do not do that. We do not do the shoes inside. No. Mm-mm. And no. um, obviously, <laughs> obviously being a newly married person and giving visualizing my mind's eye like the the the, the look my wife yeah. like gives me when I do that sort of stuff it's just a reminder that I honestly I've been in a process of just spending you know several decades as a bachelor yeah. and now I am learning every single day yeah. the responsibility what it's like to be around someone because it, you could easily say well you know I. I I've never chewed loud in my life up until up until I was around my wife. No. <laughs> and then you found out. I have chewed like a, I've chewed on meat like a Viking, like up until like the last two decades. And probably none of my other bros were like wanted to actually tell me, hey, you're eating like a pig. It's just Jerry. <laughs> it's just Jerry. <laughs> yeah. Let him eat his and food. We're He's just, enjoying but, it. But, you know, we're, we're jumping in full swing. And I think, you know, it is awesome because you know i remember luke years ago pastor luke saying how marriage is like the fast track to sanctification yeah and in a tulsa i know like i am learning so much about yeah. the things that you say the things that you do and there's you know there's times where you're just like oh man i feel i'm a total jerk and i need to repent yeah. and i need to say i'm sorry and not well, try the same and thing it's win like the argument like i you know, if there's if a jerk falls in the forest and no one's around, <laughs> it, like, has it always been a jerk? It's like, mm. yeah, you just have like a mirror on my. I was gonna say my uh, the one of all the things I may think I know about marriage, the one thing that I know for sure is that you should always make sure you're not doing the thing you're, you're mad about your spouse doing. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah. So it's it's that's it's, a good one. Yeah. So it's interesting. I mean, now and now we're uh, we're, we're jumping full in head on, and we're we're already a family of three, mm-hmm. three Yay! to be. So it's so exciting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm a I'm a dad, and we'll be a, a yeah. Right now we're expecting probably like the middle of November. Mm-hmm. So exciting! So I'm like, this is all Amazing. newly married, gonna be a dad, just jump jumping in full swing. Yeah, no holding back. No jumping Don't get all in. A lot of things done in a relatively short period of time we can that's a great yeah thing to think about life comes at you fast (laughs) what's your bit of of marriage advice andrew yeah yeah so we got the sheologians here so let's see if my marriage advice is biblical Uh, (laughs) i'll say that uh as as a man uh make sure you're doing some active listening to your to your wife if there's an issue before you provide a solution to the problem oh yes that's great advice yeah. That's my uh, that, that's my two cents right there because that's my biggest uh, issue. It's like, oh, I, I got the I got the solution right here, but you know, you got to listen a little bit first, and I'm still working on that. Oh yeah, that's a big one. I think you know, I feel like every guy who's been married for any length of time is like, yep, learned that one the hard way. <laughs> Wait, Andrew, you see, so you're saying that when I wrote out that giant like blueprint, like the ten, the twenty like step plan of how to fix this. The whole time, all she wanted to do was just 
have you mean to listen to her yeah. <laughs> it's true bro it's oh, true man shoot i gotta go i'm back to the drawing board and i get home today just turn your plan into an mlm bro and you can get some uh get some good money <laughs> there you go let's see mine would be um i i think in in terms of communication just like a little hot piece of advice is um, when your spouse offers you like those little stupid details about their day that you don't think mean much, like actually, uh, actually take part in those, like ask a question about it, like care about the little ones. Cause I think a lot of like interpersonal dynamics is like, is this person actually going to hearing what I'm saying? Like, yeah. are you, do you actually care about this stupid thing I saw on my phone? Like, oh, I laughed at a meme. Like. Are you going to take the three seconds it's going to cost you to see it? Like take those little seconds. And I think it actually, those little ones add up to a lot. And it's just something that people, I think I, well, what's interesting is you see friends do that. Mm. That's what I was going to say is that's what goes into kind of friends do that. Friends. Yeah. yeah. And so if you're not developing that piece, like you just end up becoming like roommates so actually, right. like, take the moment to look at your husband's boring old book, you know? Like, it's not that yeah. hard. And it just says, I care. Right. I care about your weird pasta sauce. Like, it's cool pasta sauce. Like, mm-hmm. you know, like, <laughs> that's cool, that little yeah. thing. Whatever. So take, just do that. Yeah. doesn't cost you anything. Just yeah. care. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, speaking of care, uh, I'm not sure how to transition. <laughs> Trying to tra- how we would transition. Boys. Speaking of care, how boys. Would- <laughs> Speaking of friends, messaging you. We're all on the internet, friends here, <laughs> inviting you. So to- friends means also related to. <laughs> yes, Jerry. Care. We're- Let's see where you were going. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was trying to think of the transition. This reminds me. I don't remember actually, but this is actually a good a good segue to talk about because this is honestly joy. Before we're going. to... Oh, so by the way, we're going to probably have like. A couple of uh, YouTube comments are like, okay, conversation starts at 25 minutes. <laughs> yeah. But we're actually just soaking in the sin because this is our, you and I go way back. He's going to say it again. I know. He's doing He's it gonna again. He's going to keep saying it somewhere. I'm so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, no, we, have y'all ever seen me walk off a set before? Because <laughs> you're about to. Yeah. No, we do go way back, Joy. We go way we back. Like pre sheologians pre-cultish. Even like pre-apology or radio, we go way, way back. Yeah. And this is going to be the last time that we know that we're going to be face to face with a, you know, behind a microphone, which mm-hmm. is, um, it, it's bittersweet, yeah. um, a little sad, but also happy to be here. Yeah. But, um, yeah, but just, there is one time you talk about like a just Jerry moment. Like I remember this one time I was helping lead a small group and you'll know about this and it's probably is example of what happened just now where I had this great point I wanted to make in reach group. And I was like going and building up to it. And it was, we were studying something and I was like building up to this final point and somewhere about 70% to the point. You forgot where you're going. I forgot the point yeah. and people could see it. This, yes. this one a person that goes to, who no longer goes to our church. She said, she told me she, she, she could see it in my eyes. It was gone. And I'm, <laughs> I, and I'm trying to like, scramble i'm trying to do two, yeah. two different things when i'm in the, the smoke i have this great point i forgot it and i'm building up to it it was gonna be the greatest point like ever you yeah. bring up in a small group mm-hmm. you know everyone has this moment so you just yes. something so great that you're gonna say yep. and so i'm trying to buy myself time and i'm adding words and adding examples <laughs> and somewhere in the back of my mind i'm kind of like you know it's like you're driving and like come reaching on, behind trying to <laughs> do something here back back <laughs> and i got to a point where i'm just like <laughs> I, I had nothing to Did say there. And, and everyone's looking at me I'm like yeah I forgot my point like 10 minutes ago there. and, and they like, were like we know <laughs> <laughs> we know everyone could tell we could tell yeah the best thing about Jerry is it's not hidden no <laughs> no yes there's, yeah. there's no pride right no. <laughs> so anybody who's known me for a very very long time it just knows and they see me and they hear my voice but it's like yeah that's Jerry that's Jerry <laughs> yeah but it's yeah. So we're here, but here we are. Yeah. And uh, all right, let me think of a non say where I won't forget because whatever I, whatever I said was going to be super articulate, super articulate translation, but transition. But I forgot. But uh, <laughs> he already forgot where he was going. Well, let, here here we go. 
here, here's the starting point for all this because we've gone yeah. for a little bit. People are like, okay, timestamp starts at, but hey, we're, we're here to apologize to no one and just talk. Yeah. All right. So it's been years why, since so, I've done a timestamp. Yeah. <laughs> just FYI. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Years. Oh. Oh, well, good. I'm so glad. <laughs> it's been years since it's I good. cared. I think so. There's some things that, about that you can stop apologizing for. Yeah. Yeah. I That was my apology for a while was, was I'll the do timestamps. Time stamp. yeah. And then um, I think probably about three years ago, I was like, I'm actually not sorry. Yeah. So I'm not doing this <laughs> anymore. Um, if you know how to listen to a podcast, you can probably find that yeah. 15 you second know how to skip scrub. button that I just am not yep. sorry that. It literally takes two seconds to click. But um, by the way, I'm just going to tell you guys, you can leave us a voicemail at 470-465-0475. Oh, yeah. We need to do that, too. Yeah. You say that every time. I know. But it's 470-465-0475. And if you're frustrated with anything that we say, go ahead and call Jerry's Mm -hmm. voicemail. (laughs) That doesn't exist. (laughs) (laughs) So we uh, what we do have in common regarding this topic um, is that... You have avoided it for a long time. You're like, I don't want to touch this. I don't want to touch this with a 10-foot pole. And I've kind of felt the same way. I want to give some thoughts, too. But what are your thoughts initially? Because it is, we, we, I can even see just with the posts that we did, with all those, like, vintage ones from, like, Amway and where were, the, where were like, Avon, Mary, K, Mary, Mary Kay, Kay. Yeah. All, all these ones. And it's, mm-hmm. we're going to go actually into some of the history and origins of how this even started. So regardless yeah. of how you feel about it, yeah. it is incredibly interesting and fascinating. But oh, why, yeah. what's the reason, like, why have you avoided this topic? It seems like this, this would be a huge topic for you all to really do. It's probably on the minds of a lot of your audience. Yeah. So I, I think one of the reasons that... You know, I already said I think our big reason is that a lot of people, even in just the comment section when you told people we were going to talk about it, they were like, you're going to talk about this, right? Because so many people have been hurt by MLMs or have had a bad experience um, that they are expecting a certain kind of weapon in this conversation Mm -hmm. that they want us to give. So you're going to talk about how so-and-so killed his baby is like one of the comments that was left. You're going to talk about this, right? Because um, MLMs have hurt so many people that uh, it's almost like wading into somebody's like scab is what it feels like. And then there's also on the flip side that so many genuine Christians are a part of MLMs and love them. Mm. And uh, so you're dealing with two different people, two different kinds of people who really are looking for a certain kind of commentary um, that I'm, and I I don't think I'm going to end up serving either group. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, How I I think I I want, I want to, um, but Everybody has everybody has a story with MLMs. Um, I can actually tell you how I mm. accidentally became a part of one once. Really? Yeah, tell me that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. So um, <laughs> I didn't, this was over a decade ago. I didn't know what an MLM was. I had no clue. Uh, what I knew was that I had a very, very small infant who kept getting colds. We had just moved to a colder climate. I've never lived in a colder climate. Um And my baby was just getting sick all the time, like all the time. And so my friend was like, hey, you should try this product. Uh, It really helps my kid. When she has a cold, I just like use this and it really, really helps. And I don't know. I can't speak to whether or not this product actually helped or if it just coincided with my child's immune system finally winning a battle. But what I know is I use this product and my infant was genuinely better. And I'm like a really young mom, first time mom. This is the first time I'd ever even been around a baby. It was really my own baby. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm going to buy a ton of this. (laughs) Like it was so helpful that I'm just going to buy a bunch. Um, and then what happened was, uh, all of my friends knew that my daughter had been getting these horrible colds and like all of a sudden she wasn't anymore. And they were like, well, like what happened? Like, did you go, the, what'd you do? And I'm like, I just use this stuff. And they were like, oh, and I just told them about it. And they were like, I'm going to try this with my kid. And I was like, okay, like, um, I can get you a discount. Yeah. All I knew was I could get you a discount. 
And so, like, four months later, a check shows up in the mail for me. Like, an $80 check from this company that I had bought this product from. And I was like, what? And so, like, I contacted them to try to give it back. I was like, this is a mistake. Like, I don't know why they're sending. <laughs> like, all of a sudden, I started getting checks in the mail. And I was like, I don't know why they're sending me money. <laughs> I like told my husband, mm-hmm. I'm like, what do I do with this $83 check? Like for me from this company, like I don't get it. Um, but long story short, because I had bought the products and because I knew I was going to keep buying them, I like signed up to have an account to and get then, the discount to get the discount. Yeah. And then when I gave my friends my account number to get the discount, what I had done was become a part of an MLM where you spend a, you give them a certain amount of money yeah. and then a certain amount of people sign up underneath you and yeah. buy the products and you get a commission. And so I started getting commission checks because I was just doing naturally what women do when something works for them. You right. talk to your friends about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and you get them to buy it but like I I just genuinely thought like man this stuff's like really helping my kid like and like I said I didn't know what an MLM was to the point where I contacted the company and tried to give them the money like this is this was a mistake like I don't know why you sent me $83 (laughs) like I don't get it um Mm -hmm. but the moral of the story is I had to spend I had to spend $150 before I got an $83 check and something really important to know about MLMs is like 99% 99% of people lose money. So like I spent 150, right? And I made 83. Yeah. Well, and your friends had to sp- keep in mind your friends under you had to spend yeah. money too. Yeah. So well, anyway, that's how I accidentally became a part of an MLM. Yeah. And to this day, um after a while I stopped buying this stuff and a bunch of other things happened that led me to go This was either placebo or just incredible timing that made it seem like this helped my Mm. daughter with her colds. Um, When this, when I started seeing people claim that these same products could cure cancer, a little like light bulb went off for me, even as like a 23 year old where I was like, this is getting weird. Um, And I'm don't want to be a part of it. Um, But all that to say to this day, I still get, I don't know how I still get emails. I still get, sometimes I'll get text messages. I don't even have the same number from mm. this company um and it's been well over a decade i mean it's yeah. been a decade since i've purchased anything no i'll share so, with you so, go ahead andrew hold on i got a quick question for you so summer what stopped you from seeing some of those checks and being like i'm gonna keep doing this i'm gonna get more get more people was it just kind of logic to you you're like well i paid this much i'm only getting this much back like what stopped um, you from it actually creeped it? me out it was like uh it creeped me out that i was being given money um, for doing nothing except telling people about it. And I also realized that, yeah, like, okay, so I spent 150, but my friends also spent 150. And now I'm getting an $83 check. And then the, the emails, and like I said, I still get emails and texts. I've changed my number. Like they still, (laughs) um, I was just like, well, it really was the claims. It was, it was getting money. It was getting $83 for these hundreds of dollars that had been spent. And then, like I said, the claims that people who use this product were making about cancer, about it curing cancer and curing incurable diseases and things like that made me go, this is insane. This isn't right. Like, it's not it's not right. And that's not that's not true. And the whole thing just made me super uncomfortable. My my red flag went off. Um, Mm -hmm. and I was like, I'm not going to buy this anymore and I'm not going to tell people about it anymore. And I, I I like really had no idea what an MLM was at this point. It was brand new to me. Yeah. I think that's when, when it was the, I mean, obviously they've been around for a while, but I think there was sort of, uh, the spike and a lot of people got involved before they kind of realized exactly what was happening. But yeah, I think that. I mean, I guess the I guess the original question was like, why have we not wanted to cover this? <clears throat> well, but I think that you hit on some things in your story that kind of like it's not that I I mean, I guess I can't speak for everyone here at the table. Also, it's not that I believe there's non-conventional treatment for cancer but I am slightly skeptical of a product that cures colds in children and (laughs) cancer. 
Um, and you know, so there's just, there's, there's just a lot. I think maybe there's a lot to be said. And <clears throat> so my, there's a lot of emotions tied up in this and a lot of people feel loyalty for a product that, um, mm -hmm. they yeah. find efficacious and, yeah. um, or they like the results of, and then there are people, like you said, that have been hurt or just kind of destroyed. So there's just like tensions running high. And I guess my desire, which I guess this just means, you know, if you want to expose me as a coward, Jerry, I guess here you go. <laughs> yeah. But, the, you know, there's just some topics where, where you just like, you know how you feel. And um, like if you were to talk about it, you wouldn't say anything that was untrue. But the response to it, yeah. it might just not, it's like, you know, you just said we're, this is our last episode mm. that you and that we'll be doing face to face. Yeah. It's like, Super. we all have things going on. And there are some things that I just like, it's just not worth it to talk about. Yeah. I think that we can talk, have a good conversation about it today. But my decision walking into this episode was just, I'm not going to say anything untrue. Yep. And that's all. Just that's so, my goal every yeah. time I right. sit down. Yes. But for some reason <laughs> I the mic. I feel the need to just say like I'm not going to say anything. If I think I'm going to say something that's untrue, I will not say anything. Yeah. yeah. So um that's not me saying I'm right, I'm automatically right. I'm just saying that um we are going to all try to keep it very true <laughs> surrounding yes. this conversation and um if our generosity towards maybe people who do MLMs upsets you. That's something you're going to have to figure out. And if our, uh, if maybe we're not so charitable to people that are involved in MLMs or you feel we should be more charitable, that's just something you're going to have to think about. And uh, one caveat that we give sometimes on Sheologians is that um, if we're not talking about you, we're not, we're not talking, talking about, about you. you. <laughs> so if, <laughs> There's no need to, if if the statement we're saying is maybe adjacent to you and your fear is that we're talking to you, but what we're saying isn't true about you. What that means is that we're not talking about you. Yeah. And you don't need to feel yeah, defensive. Yeah. Well, so. and and two, I, I think this is particularly an issue that disproportionately impacts women, which I think is why yeah. why we get yeah. the emails. And one reason I already told you why it disproportionately impacts women. My story is exactly why it disproportionately impacts women. If women are good at anything, um, it's social contagion and social influence. Yes. And like I accidentally made money right. in an MLM. <laughs> I don't know that a lot of dudes have that story. Yeah. Um, and it's because of how much we can influence each other as women and as mothers. And it's like, you hear a mom say like my child with this horrible cough, like I fixed it with X, like what won't a mother do for her child? I'll spend $70. I'll spend $150 yeah. like to fix, if this is going to fix my child, if this is going like, it's a no brainer. Well, and we're always like managing our systems. We're always looking at the little details of our systems and going like, is there a product that could like make this Alleviate more efficient this or, yeah, or, or like I'm having this problem. Like I wish yeah. they had a this. And then now you can just sort of like type in a description on Amazon and it's like, Oh, they Here's have the that solution. <laughs> I mean, it literally the other day, this lady was like, Oh, Oh, I don't have, my child never has teething problems because I, I, buy this product and it's like that is that is women in a nutshell that is why and I also believe and I know we'll, we'll get more into this but one of the reasons why MLMs are so strong in faith-based communities is that in faith-based communities we trade on the ability like I I believe you you right. you go to my You're church. You're a trusted friend. Yeah. yeah, like you go to my church. You believe in a moral authority that's above us. Um, you're not going to prey upon me and lie to me because you love me. You care about me. We have the same religious commitments. And so MLMs are not stupid. Like they they absolutely rely on these interpersonal dynamics you have to believe the person who's selling it to you and that's that's how I accidentally made money was like 
I wasn't lying to anybody. Like I, I use this product and it, well, my kid wasn't sick anymore. And like I said, I can't tell you like if it was genuinely helpful or like that was just the end of that cold. I don't know. Was that the end of that cold? Like I don't, to this day, I can't definitively answer that question. Um, But what I know is that I wasn't lying. um, And that made me an incredibly good salesperson for this product. Right. Um, And so that's one thing to know about MLMs is they can use you without you even realizing it because they depend on the social, the the high trust environment of religious communities. Um, And who's to say that that product didn't have any impact on my kid? I still can't tell you 10 years later. I have no idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think in general, uh, there obviously there are some situations where this is not true, but generally when your friend recommends you a product, she's not lying that it worked. Right. Um, right. Yeah. I wasn't so, trying to, I was, I, I believed, I was like, this is, this is what happened. Um, now has she done a clinical trial <laughs> or, right, you know, right. like we don't know that. And, and sometimes right. you, you take the, you take a recommendation and it does and suit it's great. your needs and it really yeah, works and well. It's wonderful. And yeah. of course there are people that you trust there. There are products to this day that I buy because somebody I trust told me about it yeah. and I'm not, and they're legitimately I'm the not best product. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, I'm not sorry. Yeah. It's like if yeah. Nicoletta tells you this is the best form of magnesium, like you just buy oh, it. Nicoletta you, knows. Hashtag. Yeah, you just buy <laughs> it. Um, Ultima baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and so again, that that is one mm. reason. That is why MLMs thrive in a a religious female community in particular. Mm. Hey, what's up, everyone? We love that you are enjoying our content on a weekly basis, but this program cannot continue and wouldn't be possible without your support. So if you want to go to thecultistshow.com, there is a donate tab. You can either support us one time or you can become a monthly partner with us that will allow us to continue this program, allow us to continue to be salt and light to the kingdom of the cults. So please go to thecultistshow.com forward slash donate and you can support us one time or monthly. Also, make sure you check out our merchandise store. Go to shopcultish.com. You can see all of our great designs. A lot of you have gotten merchandise from us already. So, again, either go to shopcultish.com and check out all the awesome merch. Back to the show. Yeah, and a big part of this is a big part of MLMs, too, is storytelling marketing. So, on that note, like one thing I want to say, too, is that a lot of people will, in this whole conversation will bring in their confirmation biases. So, you think about if you have prejudice, if you even if you buy a product on Amazon, you have a bad experience, what are you going to do? You're going to look at that product on Amazon. You're going to automatically go to the one or two star reviews just so you can have everyone, you know, reinforce how you feel about this product. Who else resonates with me? Who, who's on my team? Who's on my tribe? And that's what you see a lot of times in the online world. And so you see a lot of that mm-hmm. with um, mm-hmm. even, even this whole conversation with that post that we did. But just... I want to share a story too, because I mean, a lot of people think, "Oh, are you going to just go and just and just throw down the hammer on MLMs?" Like, I don't think I can completely do that. And I'll just share a story about my introduction to the world of network marketing. Is that um, my? You both know my mom, mm-hmm. Andrew. You know my mom, and you know I actually the, already know this story. Yes. Yeah. 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 And like it was, and I remember this because like yesterday, because it was the night the Princess Diana died when it was the. Uh, I mean, I remember that story was on the news. My mom. Everybody's had, mom cried that night, right? Yeah. <laughs> was everybody's I like, mom? Yeah. I remember like exactly. It was where traumatizing. I, was. Yeah. I remember yeah. all the adults just being mm-hmm. horrified, and I was too little to understand anything yeah. that was. We were going in on. like a kitschy gift shop, and <sighs> the gift shop yeah. owner had a TV on, and everyone in there was just like watching the footage. Yeah. Oh, my mom was and just I was crying. like, look, I was looking at one of those lollipops with a scorpion inside of it. Yes! That's how like <laughs> that's, that's how vivid. fully formed that memory. Wow. Is. I loved those things. Yeah. I loved those things. Did I well, eat it? No. Did I buy it? Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, dad, buy right. me eight of them. So my dad had her. So my our family situation. I'm second also seven, and at that point, my mom had really bad uh, rheumatoid arthritis. It really kind of hit a pinnacle where it was she was in bed constantly. Um, it was very challenging because a lot of us now like we didn't 
family of seven and we have a mom who can't be a mom yeah um and she's in pain all the time and it was it was, a, it was it was a challenging dynamic for sure and so my dad heard an infomercial talking about this amazing product that that helps people and it mentioned somebody in this infomercial gave a testimony about arthritis so my dad calls him up and uh, sure enough these uh, two guys uh, i remember them uh, mike williams and greg stokes they show up and um they start talking about this amazing product and it took my mom like 15 minutes just to get from my room to i mean her room uh to the living room just to hear them and you know my mom's like just my mom should start crying because she's been she has tried everything yeah. in the sun so like don't you dare give me hope when yeah, if there is none. yeah there is yeah. and but this guy was and the other thing too is like this guy uh mike was he was, he was like genuine, like he genuinely cared. I could tell, you know, even I can't remember how old I was at the time. And, but in the whole time he goes, uh, and because he says, and this guy, Mike says, and because this is going to change your wife's life and give her her life back, this is also going to create an amazing business opportunity. So my dad was like, wait a minute. And it like kind of crosses arms with skeptical. He's like, I've, I've been kind of thrown this before. Um, but Sure enough, my dad was like, "Okay, fine. Well, what have I got to lose? Let me just let's just give it a shot. Like it's try it. It can't be worse than what it is now. See my wife in yeah. pain all the time, and this product like changed my mom's life. It saved it really. Like, I remember I yeah. my mom wouldn't be here today if it wasn't yeah. for what she was introduced to. Mm -hmm. And so I'm thankful for that. Like if this this industry and some like it saved my mom's life. And so I am I'm viewing it with that thread. It doesn't mean. Right. So you can't, you, you can either pendulum swing one way or the other. You can't, you know, I can't say that every single person in the industry is a saint, but when you watch the documentaries like Lula Rich or the ones about Herbalife, you can see, no, there's like real problems too with even how it's perpetuated, what people get into and not even realize what they're doing. And sometimes the kind of like cult like you behaviors and we, there's a lot you can, can unravel this. But I don't want to say like my point is like I come with like, and I've met, and I've connected with a lot of people who have been in that and similar industries, like a lot of great quality people. Um, and even pro there's products that I'm not going to take, I'm not going to endorse, I'm not going to like endorse it because we're not going to sponsor an MLM, but there's, there's products that I take and I buy from people who are independent distributors because yeah. I like their products. Like the whole pitching thing, it's just, it's not me. It's not my bag. I just going to throw that out there. Yeah. 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 I think it's really important to understand the distinction between like, there are supposedly quote unquote legitimate MLMs and pyramid schemes, right? That pyramid schemes aren't legitimate, but MLMs closely resemble pyramid schemes. So pyramid schemes, uh, there's no real product that's sold in a pyramid scheme. It's more about uh, making money by recruiting new participants into the program. So essentially, if you right. think about it, it's a form of people selling, yeah. right? And you're not dealing with equal weights and measures. And we know that the Bible says in Proverbs 16, 11, that's extremely important. God cares about dealing with equal weights in measures. So there's, there are MLMs that can be legitimate, but also MLMs, MLMs are fronts for many things that are pyramid schemes that are not good yeah. and people end up getting hurt regardless. Yeah. So Joy, what about you? Do, do you ever, were you ever pitched or like, what's kind of your story where you got like, um, do you have an origin story? I of was, like I was kind it? of a part of that just movement where they, st like all the products started getting popular and then so you'd like see start seeing the products and the products were yep. kind of viral. Um, like that was when we kind of started understanding virality. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then pre internet. And then you were pitched this. Then like on the back end of the product, you mm -hmm. were mm -hmm. like told about mm -hmm. like selling and buying and mm -hmm. and a lot of the people that I know that were involved purchased not to sell but for the the product yeah and f the price difference of yeah. the product without being a seller versus the product price yep. being a seller um but yeah I mean I didn't there was a, I had some interest in some of the products and I still have maybe not interest in those specific brands, but some of the products that they were selling generally. But I, there did, there came a moment where I, yeah, my alarm bells started going off uh -huh. a little bit. Um, some of it was the, the pushiness of like, um, you know, well, so first of all, actually just n sort of the general buzz of being at like a sales party 
Because that's how it, that's where it really happened at the beginning mm-hmm. is you're in a room. Yeah. Most likely you're yep. in a room with all your good friends. Yeah. People, you know, people and you trust. someone you trust yeah. or someone that your friend trusts mm-hmm. is telling you about a product. They're telling you the most exciting things about it. They're giving you all this information. Yeah. It's this whole new system to learn. Yeah. Um, and the products are great. And then again, like you're trying products, products actually work products like, you know, it is what it is. Um, and s- you're kind of like running off of the energy that's in this room, which it, like you're basically it's you and your friends having fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's social contagion. Yes. yes. And this, and then there's this added component of this product that's going to solve a problem in your life. And, and yeah. it's a nice product and they let you try it and you act, maybe you actually liked it. Um, but then I did have, I did have a few ladies, not anyone I knew directly, but like friend of a friend type situation where they were a little pushy, mm. um, like kind of contacting a lot. Mm-hmm. And then like me kind of not contacting and then me eventually saying no, thank you. And then they were still kind of uh-huh. contacting. Yeah. And it's like, that's just not. That's not like we were all friends in that room, but that's not friend type behavior. Like when I tell you, no, thank you. And you're still trying to sell me the product. Yeah. That, um, that's something else that makes me feel like you're just selling. It's not, no longer about the benefits of the product, but that's really, I mean, I had a very, I would say light introduction to it and then kind of early on ish. Mm-hmm. I that there were there was a very short period where I was like excited and then and then it was just uh not no. it I started alarm bells started yeah. going off and I was like yeah this just doesn't and yeah. I think maybe even at the time I even if I couldn't have quite put my finger on it I just <laughs> didn't yeah it took away from the buzz mm-hmm. of it and it just made it seem like more of a scheme more mm-hmm. of a pitch mm-hmm. which i think just makes you we all know why salesmen get a bad rep mm-hmm. right and there's we all know there's a huge difference between someone selling you something honestly and legitimately and someone just trying to sell yeah. you something no matter what right. right and so i just started getting more of that feeling like i feel like you're just like mm-hmm. you were my friend when I met you at the party, but now it's kind of like you giving, just really want me to buy vibes. your stuff. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So we're not friends is what you're saying. Yeah. So, so where, where would you guys draw the line with uh, MLMs? Uh, Cause I know you guys did episodes on Nexium and Keith Rainier, uh, his enter- enterprise success program was essentially like yeah. an MLM. Mm-hmm. Uh, can you explain like, the Nexium, difference, right? like where the line would yeah. be drawn? Yeah. yeah. Between like saying, you know, taking like a broad brush with uh, MLMs and saying I'm not going to, you know, uh, have a formal position on it, but versus Nexium, like what's the difference between the Tupperware uh, mm-hmm. MLM, I don't even know if that is an MLM, or Nexium. what's the difference? Yeah, well in one you have to be a part of a sex cult, um, <laughs> and in the other you just have to have Tupperware, so... Um, I don't know. Was Tupperware? uh, Well, yeah, there's a Tupperware. Yeah. No, but was Tupperware like a MLM type thing? Yeah. Yeah. For a long time. Tupperware. Tupperware parties were. No, I knew that. I just didn't know if they they were like. Well, I I don't know if Tupperware is an official brand. I don't know if it was Tupperware, but it's, you know. It was the official brand. I just didn't know if those parties were like. They were MLM parties. Yeah. 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 Uh, Not Tupperware, the brand, to be clear. Just things you put old food in. No, I'm pretty sure that was, was it Tupperware. The brand. Yeah. Okay, well they're very litigious, so I'm not saying that. We're about not Tupperware. confirming that. Um, <laughs> so the line that I would draw, and again, this is going to be a general biblical principle, um, but what I would say, what I think women need, what I think women in particular need, and maybe you guys aren't going to totally relate to this, but well, congratulations on being a dude. Um, I've been married for five months. I'm, I'm totally know. going to. Re- I fully expect you know myself to fully this. relate. Uh, um, try me. So women, I think, are particularly is we we want to believe our friends. We want to alleviate 
problems. And so what I think women in particular need to be wary of and cannot as a Christian participate in, let's say I really liked Norwex. I hear their products are great. Okay, cool. Um, I cannot as a Christian tell my friend, hey, do you want your life to be completely revolutionized? Because this rag is what's going to do it. Like, you're never going to experience a better cleaning day in your kitchen unless you have this rag. Um, Because it's just not, I I think it's just not honest. Um, You can tell your friend about how great a product is. That's fine. You, You can tell your friend, I love this thing and like, it's been really helpful. But I think when you start sounding like a social media ad, you've kind of left the reservation of like what your duty is as a Christian, which is we sell this like perfect life. Like we sell this, like, if you have this product, then this is going to happen to you. Um, You don't, you don't know that. So with something like, you know, taking magnesium, right? Mm -hmm. I would say you should take magnesium. Like it's good. It's good for you. Um, If I started, if I like looked you in the eye and told you like, buy this magnesium for me because you're never going to have a better night's sleep than you ever have. I've left by what standard, like I've left the Mm -hmm. realm of what I've over promised something uh, that I, I can't actually know is going to happen to you. Yeah. Um, I can, I do know based on truth that most people are magnesium deficient and it's probably something that you should be taking. And here's a brand that's good. Mm-hmm. Um, but if I'm going to financially profit off of a promise that this particular magnesium is going to change your sleep, that's not something that I know. Yeah. I don't I can't look my friend in the eye and know she's magnesium deficient. Like that's not something that mm. I can do. Um I Well, can- and with the internet, this like if you post anything health related, really anything. Like women love recommending. They love the problem they love the oh, you have that problem? Here's how I solved that problem right. that I had. And you will just get like a thread full of 35 different pieces of advice. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I think that it's it's good to attempt to understand, especially products that like offer some sort of health benefit. And you're going to have to talk to a trusted source who's trusted for a reason that's more than just, right. yeah, uh, you're my friend. Well, and right. I think this conversation is is by by what standard? By yeah. what standard can you say that to me? Right. So if I'm going to give you health advice, it has to be something that lines up with scripture. It it has yeah. to be something that lines up with scripture. It has to be something that um, I can say, well, I know that, uh, you know, God designed our bodies uh, in a certain way. And this is what I know is true about our bodies. This is and, and it can't be well, I read this ad and I know of this person and that's a lot of what happens. And so the distinction yeah. that I would make about whether what your duty is, if you're considering being a part of an MLM, is um, how f- what are you willing to promise? And can you look, how about this though? This is one concern that I have is like, are you selling a product that's just like a more expensive version of something else because Mm. if your friend if you're really concerned your friend has you know let's stick with the magnesium because it's an easy one like let's say you know you know you know a little bit about science you know about magnesium deficiency whatever um are you gonna sell your friend this expensive magnesium because it's gonna financially benefit you whereas you know you could maybe suggest to them a different product that might be helpful because who are you, who are you blessing in this conversation? And, and are you promising that, that fixing this is going to fix you ultimately? Because I would say that's not love. Like that's not loving your neighbor as yourself. Like you're trying to make a sale at that point. Mm -hmm. Um, And that would be something that a Christian should not be participating in. Yeah. And one thing I'll just say too, is that, when we, even when we talk about selling, like the Bible talks a lot about economics, a lot. And, you know, a lot of times we try and spiritualize Proverbs where everything is like, everything's always a spiritual analogy, but okay. But King Solomon, he is the wisest, most wealthiest man who have, who's ever lived 
ever. So he might, when he talks about wealth and prosperity and those sorts of things, he's talking about wisdom that came from God where I actually learned things and I applied them. Right. So like selling is actually a good thing. Uh, like Proverbs 11. Oh, yeah. 20, so Proverbs eleven twenty six says people curse those who hold back the grain, but there's a blessing on the head of him who sells it. So in reality is that you get to be, if you have something that's good and is worthwhile, that actually is a blessing yeah. to people, but you don't, set it up where you can actually have a way where people can, there can be exchange, there can be a back and forth left and right. That actually is, is a curse. But when you actually can give something in exchange where you have people realize that, okay, what, what I have is less, what you have is more valuable than what I have. Let's do an exchange. Like God says, there's a blessing like that's, that's right in Proverbs. But along with that, and this is where it's kind of tricky because when it comes to even like marketing and branding as a whole, like there's always, so here, here's something I learned just because I've always been kind of like a marketing geek and kind of studied different aspects of it. So when someone buys something, when you buy something, you're not buying that product. You're buying the marketing of that product mm-hmm. because like you walk into a Coles and you see a, a cute T-shirt and you see the display on the wall, like, you know, the mom like walking with her kids and he's like, oh, that looks really cute and it fits really well. But it's, it's sort of giving this visualization, hey, this this feels comfortable. Right. Then all of a sudden you make that decision. For example, you're all familiar with the, the North Face, right? Mm-hmm. The brand. Mm-hmm. So here's what the North Face does. This is what their brand does as far as like marketing goes. So you can go probably and buy like a winter jacket that's probably just as comfortable, mm-hmm. just as good a quality, it might even keep you warmer mm-hmm. than the North the North Face jacket. But what does the North Face do? When you go to their website, mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if they're a super woke company now. Hopefully it's not like some trans Jenga on top of a mountain or something. But <laughs> it, it probably is. It yeah. probably is. It probably <laughs> is. But anyways, you it's usually somebody traveling into the great unknown, you know, on top of a mountain, like reaching up, you know, up going up Mount Everest or something like that. So really when you look at North Face's brand, is that you're not just putting on a jacket. You're you putting are put, on adventure. You're putting on a passport. A you. Yeah, a new you're, you. You're putting on. You're putting some on something that gives that you're giving yourself permission to travel into the great unknown. So there's this level of emotion that comes with that, yeah. and that, and that's a big part of it. So when you come, and I think the challenge that I have had as we kind of jump into this, we're going to jump actually into the origins of how this started in a second, which is going to be related to your show and feminism, patriarchy, and all that fun stuff, but. Um, it is uh, what I have had trouble with is that because I've kind of delved a little bit into this. I mean, obviously, you know, I kind of told you the story of my parents is that a lot of times when I've tried to embrace that whole world, I sort of get forced into becoming somebody that I'm not, mm-hmm. you know, you like dress for success, fit, mm-hmm. you know, uh, what was the thing? Fake it till you make it, mm-hmm. you know, and it's just like every single time you're like, that's not me. And I think only of us, and I, I'm saying, I think there's people in that industry who are very real, very genuine, very authentic. I think it is challenging for me and for a lot of people to say, walk down what this company set, tells you to say, but still be your authentic self. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot, because a lot of times you said it's somewhere like you see someone pay, posting on Facebook, but all of a sudden it's, mm-hmm. you're, this mm-hmm. is not you. This is sort of like a something you're being told to say. Yeah, well, like yeah, a little and, script. Yeah, and you have to work. I mean, if you want to make money in direct sales, like you have to be very busy being your own advertiser. Right. You better be on Instagram. You better be on Facebook. You better be making reels. You better be filling up people's stories. Like, if you're not doing that, you aren't going to be getting enough eyes to be making sales. Well, so, and this is my distinction is that, um, we're not when you're talking about an MLM, you're not just talking about a product. Yeah. You're talking about getting people to sell underneath you. Yes. Um, and that's actually how you make you money. are making your money. Yep. Um, is that you have a team of people that are essentially selling as well. Right. Yeah. And in order to do that, so you're talking about the the claims surrounding the product, but the claims surrounding the selling becoming a seller Mm -hmm. um, is a huge distinction for me because we actually know the math has been done (laughs) um, about how long 
it is sustainable for people to be making lots and lots of money selling MLM products and getting people underneath them purely just because of how you're the people in the surrounding area work. Mm-hmm. And you're just going to need a certain amount of people to be selling to, but you're not, you're mm-hmm. not selling to them because that you're creating sellers. So basically what you're doing is you're creating, you have to create sellers. To if create you get money. in early, you will be, mm-hmm. if you get in early and you sell hard, Mm-hmm. you will probably make a lot of money. Mm-hmm. But that is not sustainable over time just based off of how yep. how the system works. Yep. So what that means is that at a certain point, you are lying to someone when you, you're lying to the single mom when you're saying, and you won't, you will not have to, you know, you can work from home and you can, I pay my, you know, my husband still works, but I pay my mortgage every month with this business and you can be self-employed. Um, and I, that's a false claim, yep. especially depending on how far yeah. you are in like how uh, far reaching that product has already Gone. infiltrated mm-hmm. the market. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not that is that's a different like, well, I guess it depends on the product and what it's promising. But you're basically, you're promising a whole new life. If you're telling someone it can cure cancer and you're telling someone that you won't have to be poor and struggling anymore, you're talking about a very extreme claim that we know for sure works, that it's not a 100% sure claim. And we do absolutely know that. And so that's, it's another component of it. I, I, I'm certain there are people that are selling because they love the product and their focus is not to have sellers underneath them. Mm -hmm. But um, if you are in communication with the higher ups of the MLM, they will be wanting you to be recruiting people. Yes. Um, The whole system collapses if you're not recruiting sellers. Right. There has to be people recruiting sellers. That that's the difference between a legitimate MLM and a pyramid scheme. Because a pyramid scheme, it's not about the product. There may be a physical product, but no one's making money actually off the product. Mm -hmm. They're making money off of recruiting people. So now you're in the business of people selling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the product keeps the eyes off of what's actually going on with the legitimate pyramid. I'd say that's where the biblical issue would be. Yeah, that's how I made my $83 was that people people had signed (laughs) up underneath Uh me. But I had had, I think like it was like two people signed up underneath me. Like that was, that was it. And I didn't even ask for that to happen, but that's exactly what happened was that I had recruited sellers on accident. Yeah. And it, yeah. and then also in the documentary, uh, Lula Rich, which is about the company Lula Row, is that someone in the middle, one of the main top ambassadors, one of the top earners, when she actually looked at the amount of uh, product that she sold, these leggings and other things like in the Lula Row, and then you look at the actual expenditures, mm-hmm. she basically had broken even. However, where she got ahead was all these bonuses that she got from, from recruiting. Mm-hmm. So that's the only way that she really made money wasn't this product it was the amount of people you you brought in so i think it's a matter of like it is it is kind of a sticky situation to navigate but um while we do this this is what i was very fascinated i kind of been through a couple podcasts and i had andrew do some research and by the way just so you know there's a new era of andrew andrew has always been super sleuth andrew um so time wise are the the first episode that andrew and i ever recorded uh, Jeff, remember when Jeff had the seizure? Yeah. And so he was off, and that's where I'm like, okay, what am I going to do? Uh, Andrew, jump on. Let's. We just got. We got to figure out how to do a podcast together. And we didn't even know what we were doing. We had like fifth. I feel like we had like probably, I don't know, twenty, twenty five like audio clips because we did, we were. I was so like afraid to talk. I'm like, oh, let me play this clip and that clip. But Andrew did a ton, a ton of research on uh, Jim Jones, and I think at one point. <laughs> He said, uh, like, I'm here, the background sleuth. And so he kind of gave himself the name the sleuth. Uh. And then he became super, super sleuth Andrew. But there's a new era where, Andrew, you uh, utilize chat GPT, which, and also you're using AI to help with your research. And so now this is you're, crazy. You're, you're, a, you're a mixture of like man and machine. So my new nickname, you're kind of like cyborg sleuth Andrew. <laughs> Cyborg That's so funny. <laughs> yeah, because all of a sudden now it's like the research you're getting me is so much more in such a short amount of time, which is also good because now you have you have four kids and I have one on the way. So it's like we got to just really compartmentalize our time. 
So, yeah. but um, we got to preface that though with Chat GPT. GPT is wrong a lot as well. So yeah. you got to double check things. You mean people don't GPT. have like six fingers, six, seven fingers? By <laughs> um, what standard? No. By what standard? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But Andrew, you did some research. Tell me, what did you find about the origins of MLM and how it started? Because this will really kind of go into where uh, some of, a lot of what we're going to talk about in the rest of our conversation. Yeah, I think that the origins specifically of like the business market form of an MLM have been around for so long, so long. Uh, but historically in America, the first MLM founded was uh, by a man named Carl Renborg, who actually was the offspring of Dutch Reformed Calvinist uh, people. And that MLM that he formed was called California Vitamin Company. It was founded in 1926, which later became known as Neutralite, which later then in 1959 becomes known as Amway. So, yeah, uh, that's 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 pretty much the nutshell of Ugh, those the Dutch first reform. MLM that's in America. <laughs> I know. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. And it's funny because ChatGPT at first was telling me this person was Mormon. I'm like, no. <laughs> I'm like correcting ChatGPT. It's yeah. like, there's a lot of other uh, MLM mm -hmm. uh, owners that are Mormon, but not this guy. Right. And so we do, <laughs> but it's very here. All MLMs mm -hmm. are Mormon, according yeah. to ChatGPT. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They can't differentiate. <laughs> But a lot of what's very interesting is a lot of MLMs now, they do operate where just as women networking and connecting together. And so the way that worked, and because you had a lot of changes in advertising, initially you had, you know, radio ads, every family had a radio in their in their home. You think about listening to like a Flash Gordon or the news updates, everyone would always listen into the radio and your radio programming. And then eventually it wasn't until it wasn't even until like the mid fifties where the, you know half of America had a television set in their home. So you'd either have radio advertising, you would have television advertising, but even a lot of times the, you would have those like door to door, those door to door salesmen. You think of the show Mad Men, like that John Hamm patriarchal era where all the women are, you know, back at the house, like making the, making their man a sandwich while he's out, you know, winning the goods. But it, a lot of times they, you know, I think a lot of advertising companies, they realize that no, the the women is actually even though it still was you call it like very strong patriarchal society then, is that a lot of them realize no, we need to find a way to kind of get to the women in a way to where we can sell our products to them, but through women talking to each other because not only that you had everyone live in very close proximity to each other. So your network would have been like the women in your neighborhood and all of them at that time, the majority of them are staying home. And so a lot of them will get together. They'll talk throughout the day. So I think what happened is that a lot of these advertising agencies saying, Hey, there's a marketplace that is going to be very different if from, if we have a traveling vacuum salesman that's going door to door to door to door, especially if he's knocking on the door when the husband isn't home, he's the decision. Let well, me, I got to talk to my husband and, and there's like this, kind of gateway of like before I can actually sell this vacuum where if you can make these women at home independent distributors, whether it's makeup or anything else, they're talking to their girlfriends. It's a lot more organic. So I think that's really where you see the involvement of a lot of other companies during like the 1940s and 1950s. I, that was, I think that was the one podcast that we had in that thread group that was like shutting up. That was, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, this was also you have to keep in mind, too, there was a time there was like a shift um, where it was more acceptable and more affordable for women to like start taking on like convenience appliances where at one point they would have had to do more things by hand um, or the machines would have been like manually run or whatever that may be. And then at a certain point, it was more affordable to actually own appliances that could do the work for you but also just became popular. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like how do you, how do I know my husband's taking care of me? Well, he bought me a dishwasher. Yeah. Like that's how I know he cares because he wants me to not have to wash my, all my dishes by hand or, you know, and that's, mm -hmm. that was just, that was like for women at the time, that was the equivalent of like having a fancy car yeah pull up into the driveway like it was a sort of a like a status thing and yeah. you know so there there was a i think that element still kind of still kind of runs through yeah. as a theme like you're sort of on the cutting edge like i know about this nutritional product that not everyone knows about there is sort of like a prestige yeah. involved yeah in a way i don't know yeah 
Or that, yeah, I think there's also when it comes to when you look at the way that network marketing a lot of times will have a brand a specific product, you get you kind of are you come to believe if you're a distributor of this product that the only good vitamin C is the Herbalife vitamin yeah. C or this one and all of a because sudden because it's been formulated and packaged in such a way that X and Y and Z has been extracted and oh yeah that's in every I mean that's in every the supplement industry in general yeah. there's a reason they call it an industry yeah because they really are trying to sell you yeah. health yeah. so I feel like I mean buyer beware when it comes to MLM supplements, but also just like any in supplement ever. <laughs> yeah, this isn't related to MLM. There is a there is a, an aspect of branding where it's like you have to really think through because there are people. You know, the Bible does talk about you know uh, unwaste just unjust weights and measures, and you can see that come to you from any from any angle. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So, uh, Andrew, why don't you do this? Because uh, you talked a second ago about the paper you went through. So. We're also talking about, okay, how can MLMs be cold? Just like I said, I think that, you know, there are great people out there. There are products that really help and are a blessing to people. There are ones where even people have been blessed financially. I think even a lot of people I've met who have been very successful in that world, like the very kind, very generous people. And they're also very, very giving. Um, I'll just say that off the get go, but that doesn't mean I could, and like I said, even with how that has helped and blessed my family's life, I can't turn a blind eye to things that are the problematic side of this whole situation, which is regardless of where you stand, you should take a look at both sides. But Andrew, what were some of the uh, areas in your research in this paper, you mean your cyber sleuth abilities <laughs> of <laughs> areas in which, what are some of the other, the kind of the dark side of the history of MLMs and where it has gone cult-like and sometimes where they got in trouble, certain companies got in trouble with the FTC? What did that look like? Even though this doesn't represent it as a whole, it, it, we can't turn a blind eye to it. Yeah, so I'll, I'll try to say it this way. I think the, the general uh, worry that we should have with certain MLMs is that a lot of them are based off of cults of personality, right? A certain person with a cer- certain invention, with a certain look, with a certain feel. And the people who essentially sometimes buy into uh, what is going on uh, will adopt the same type of characteristics, right, of the individual or the corporation will get that type of atmosphere. And I'm going to be honest, like I worked at State Farm for uh, I think it was like six or seven years. And even regular corporations do this, right? Like during my orientation at State Farm for four weeks, I heard videos of Ed Rust, who was the CEO of the company at that time, constantly talking, constantly talking, trying to get me to adapt the same type of mindset as him when working in the company. But the thing is though, within a pyramid scheme is there's not a lot of checks and balances, right? Look at a pyramid. It's not, you know, it gets smaller the closer you get to the top. So essentially what can happen is bad business practices or there's not enough oversight within the the building or whatever the corporation to stop certain things from happening. I mean, you can look it up for yourself. You can look up Am- Amway's uh, lawsuit allegations, Lula Rose, you can look up Young Living. All of them are super similar. Uh, but what it always comes down to, at least within the United States of America, is whether or not it's a pyramid scheme or a legitimate MLM. But I think it's important to understand First, that the cult of personality is not just something that uh, people who are interested in MLMs fall for, but it happens within corporate America today. Like it's just a reality. You can't work at any major corporation, United States of America, without getting certain things shoved down your throat. Uh, You know, you got to adopt a certain uh, standard uh, in order to try to have a habitable place to work at. I mean, Summer, you worked at uh, Starbucks for a while, right? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. I mean, all what, of this. What was is, orientation like there? All of this is ringing bells. Um, and at Starbucks, I would say, uh, I actually, so I haven't worked at Starbucks since 2014, but I have nothing but good things to say about um, how they treated their employees at the time. So, you know, I'm, right. I've, I'm a decade removed at this point, but I worked there. You know, by the time I had quit, I had worked there for a third of my life, and uh, so a pretty significant amount of time. And um, yeah, you were, you are expected. If somebody's going to pay you a paycheck, you're definitely expected to live up to their expectations of you in your job. Um, and you know, one reason why I think 
at least in my day, a lot of Christians fit in at Starbucks was because you were expected to be hospitable as a person. You know, it's kind of like when you go to Chick-fil-A, you're expected to be hospitable. Like the Chick-fil-A people, they're supposed to treat you a certain way. And at Starbucks, you were supposed to treat people a certain way that really lined up with being kind and patient yeah. and and extra giving and the customer is always right kind of thing. I don't think that environment exists anymore. That's a different subject. But um, <laughs> my pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, and um, so there's an extent to which I don't have a problem with a company who's giving you a paycheck saying this is your code of conduct. Um, that's kind of what you're signing up for. Um, but the I think the reality with some of the MLMs uh, that have been busted is that 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 cult of personality really did start at the top and we're talking about people you know the founder of young living is guilty of like actual crimes um in relation to what he's done with um health and supplements and wellness like he's a convicted criminal mm -hmm. um and so it really does come from the top down i mean i'm about in the rich because they had yeah, it was the couple no, that, I'm talking, I said Young Living. Oh, Young Living. Okay. The the guy that founded Young Living, I think, has been convicted of. So you, go go look it up. Yeah. It's a it's crazy. It's a crazy story. Business Insider has covered it. Um, we're talking about somebody who's who's con a convicted criminal. Um, and I'm pretty sure his company is still flourishing, and a lot yeah. of it on the basis of things that people have claimed, like this will cure cancer. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> um, and things like that. So yeah, that's very problematic. And again, my, my warning to women on this topic is just that I think we are, um, we are much more easily convinced of things, uh, than we ought to be. <laughs> and especially in faith communities, when you hear someone say, well, this is what happened to me. Um, it's easy to, it's just very easy to be uh, swept up into. Yeah. And so that is why you have a duty as a Christian woman to um, speak truthfully about mm -hmm. things. You have, you have a, a duty to speak truthfully um, and you have a duty to love your friend above re recruitment. Sorry for interrupting your currently scheduled programming, but did you know you can go to apologiastudios.com and become an all access member with all access membership you get exclusive content from all of Apologia Studios productions, not to mention Cultish is an Apologia Studios production. So you'll get access to Cultish, the aftermath where Jerry and I talk together after our most recent series discussing what we thought. It's really cool. We have a lot of fun doing it. And, you know, we can't do this without the studio. It keeps the lights on. And we can't also do this without you. So please go to ApologiaStudios.com and become an all access member. Now back to the programming. Yeah, and, I, and I, there's a couple of things I'll say, like the cult-like aspects of uh, MLMs is that um, there's a couple of things is that usually, you know, a lot of times certain distributors will they'll focus in on the product and they'll say, oh, there's no selling or that the product sells itself. And then you kind of realize like, no, you actually do. People need to get to kind of know you. So it all of a sudden becomes a sort of weird personal development journey where you're sort of becoming this, you know, you're, you have to kind of become your own sort of cult of personality. And I've seen this happen. A cult of personality that conforms with the brand of that MLM company. So there's this brand. I never, I was never a part of it. I don't even know if it's around anymore. I think it was called Visalis. And it was, it was a weight loss supplement company. Mm -hmm. And I know like everyone, it was like you didn't, you just knew you, the minute you saw a Facebook, you saw somebody with this specific Facebook post and like, yep. That's a, that's a Vassalis post because they're they're acting directly in conformity. It's kind of like they're given a cult mantra to say or how I'm now this like girl boss and now I'm losing this weight. I'm on this weight loss journey. You just knew, mm -hmm. and so then like you had you had to go with that. But then you know you eventually you know you end up going to conferences, whether it's a personal development conference or and I've kind of gone down that road too because there's ones I dabbled into dabbled in forever ago, is that a lot of the personal development world and uh, is that it's label with pseudo new, it's a gateway to the new age. Mm -hmm. So what's in every single um, and there, you can even look at some of the origins of, of certain MLMs where you had different people who are very much into like the law of attraction, uh, 
you had uh, just a lot of even like Tony Robbins and like I remember like listening to Tony Robbins because I was told by the part organization I was part of like I hey, listen to him listen to this person listen to this person and I had no idea like I posted one time a couple things on Facebook and somebody reached out to me like hey you really you posted some like really new age stuff I'm like I did yeah I had no, I had no <laughs> I like, idea wait, what <laughs> but I but when I think about it I had no idea like I, I but in a sense like I was being boiled like a frog and so I think that's an area too but then what also when you kind of look go down the rabbit hole and you look at even people who are the top earners in a lot of these companies, most of them end up being part of something called an ambassador. Like every MLM, almost they have an ambassador program where you're sort of the official representative. You are the people who go up on stage, who kind of encourage everyone. And But you usually you have to be at every single live event and you have to just abide by certain things. And a lot of times what people will talk about how MLM gets you all this freedom and lifestyle. But honestly, it is you end up a lot of times being owned where you're pre and I, I know people personally from a long, long time ago who said like we were preaching, they said we were preaching the dream, but living the nightmare where it was just hours upon hours of having to recruit all these people because you had all these people going out the back door because the, the people in the bottom hardly made any money. And there's a lot of times where sometimes you might have a top earner who's in your downline in an organization, all of a sudden they decide to switch companies. Mm -hmm. So, you know, too, like bouncing around from like health and supplement, these companies that happens all the time. So what happens when you're getting an income and say you're even a top earner earning like $20,000 a month and all of a sudden somebody in your organization just decides to leave mm -hmm. and go, with that goes your home downline, your income just cut gets cut in half. What do you do? And then a lot of times what you end up seeing is that the people who leave the all of a sudden they have issues with a company it almost becomes like it seems like something out of scientology where the company turns against them they get terminated and they just get completely burned out and spit out the other end so there is a dark side of this that is just mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. it's a danger but like i said there's a lot of pseudo new age in this because you yeah. just the whole process of becoming a top earner now you do have to become the sort of cult a personality or a girl boss and there's times where i've even looked like side by side with somebody who's like branding themselves as the MLM top earner and somebody who's an, a practitioner of the new age. And it's basically a self ident it's identical except, Hey, I'm a girl boss who sells this product versus, Hey, I'm the girl boss who's I'm becoming my own goddess. Yeah. Like it's hard to separate distinct those two, mm -hmm. but it's, it definitely is a dangerous rabbit hole for sure. Yeah. Well, the growth of the MLM movement in the eighties and nineties is based on something called the human potential movement, Yeah, which was just a load of <laughs> new age garbage. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not really reaching your potential if you're not earning these numbers. And it's that it's the law of attraction. Essentially, it was like, you're going to attract this money to you by attracting people to you. Um, and so, yeah, there have definitely been a lot of very pagan New Age ideas attached to uh, MLMs and uh, those would be genuine pyramid schemes, although they called them an airplane game in the yeah. 80s and the 90s. You know, you imagine you're the captain of the airplane and you have these people in the airplane with you behind you and that's your yeah. seller team, that's your distri distribution team and the more people you have on the airplane, the more quickly you can move up to become the next captain of the next airplane and this was all based on the law of attraction and um, again, it wasn't really the product that you were selling, it was everybody, you know, if everybody behind Behind you puts in 5,000 towards you, then they, anyway, it's obviously um, a scheme. That is a kind of scheme that a Christian cannot participate in. Right. And then, you know, I think about, and one time I was at this live event and there's a guy on stage and he's, and he basically was talking about how, if you just follow these steps and you do this, 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 and this, and this is the things you're supposed to do to be a top earner in this company. He says, you'll be able to finally learn how to bend the universe to your will. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So honestly, when I when I kind of went down, what a claim, it, right? So I grew up in a you know a, a Christian household. I mean, you kind of knew you you knew my parents, and you came to my house along like forever, like mm -hmm. eight eons and eons ago. Mm -hmm. And we had R.C. Sproul books and all these theology books, and that's what we were raised in. I mean, it was there's areas in which, like I said, the MLM was a was a blessing because it it helped you know our health and and yeah. young longevity and all that sort of stuff. But um, it's I learned a lot of the new age stuff. Like I was citing and kind of thinking kind of a little bit new age-ish just because 
of the fact that I kind of delved into that world. I kind of bought the idea like, hey, maybe I can sort of bend the universe to my will, but maybe that's maybe that would really means like to love the Lord my God with all love the Lord your God with all your whole soul, soul, mind, and strength. So I was actually blending in like mm. scripture and new age mm. stuff, like as a Christian mm. because of that. Mm-hmm. So I think honestly, even if you are mm. in this, and I would say too, like if you're in this industry, like you need to be salt and light wherever you're at. But even if you're in this industry, you believe in the business model, you believe in the product, you need to really think with the discernment and because there's a lot of this new age stuff that you just, you kind of usually are sometimes you think at face value, but you can start believing some really weird stuff very quickly. Well, and just check what you believe about the product because I do think the way that the MLM will talk about a product will have you thinking more highly of what this product can do for you than it actually can. So, you know, I've heard Christian women say like, yeah, you know, my kid was having an outburst today, but like I forgot to put the lavender on him this morning, you know, because you've heard so many times that lavender is calming, lavender is calming, lavender is calming. And you know what? Lavender smells really nice (laughs) and it does smell very calming. Um, But if you start seeing your kids sin issues as a lack of using this product, um, you've left the reservation in terms of like where it's safe to be, where it's like within scripture, like by what standard is your children, you know, your children have anger issues that you have been treating with, you know, probiotics or right. lavender oils or, or whatever. And again, Joy and I talk about this all the time. Yeah, sometimes when you're a grumpy person, you might just need a nap. <laughs> yeah. But but what I'm saying is how you're talking about it is wrong. Yeah. Your child isn't having anger outbursts because you didn't use lavender this morning. Mm-hmm. That's not the actual problem. And once you become a part of that world, you can start to think that way. Like, wow, I'm being X because I haven't used this product. That is how MLMs and many companies outside of MLMs as well tend to talk about their products. Um, And so as Christians, you need to make sure you fortify yourself and you're not susceptible to that kind of uh, thinking. And where where are you putting your hope? Are you putting your hope for your mood on the nap you missed, on the probiotic you didn't take, on the lavender you didn't use, whatever else it is, the question is like, where are you putting your hope? And if you spend a lot of time selling a certain product, you know, you just need to be mindful about how you talk about it. Yeah. No. And I think uh, one other thing as well, too, because I mean, you've always, have only, you've dealt with self-care a little bit, the whole self-care thing on Sheologians. And I think that this is an area Another area, I think the dark side or the dangers, you can kind of give me your thoughts, is that a big part of what is told, and this is told on stage in multiple different org- uh, organizations and MLMs, that you need to, you've got this dream, you've got this vision, but you, you only need to be with people who are fully aligned with your vision to be a top earner in this company. So what you end up doing is that means you need to, anybody who kind of it thinks negatively of you or your aspirations uh, like those that's that's a toxic person and you need to cut them out of your life and there might be sometimes where someone's like hey, like legitimate hey you spent ten thousand dollars on this thing like you just spent and here's the thing too a lot of times people who are brand new you're told go to the live event go to the live event and a lot of these are just it's very emotionalized bunch of lights and you saw like the the, the hill blue song the room. service <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a Hillsong service. It's very emotionalized. <laughs> yeah. But you think about money that's spent on tickets, money that's spent for the hotel, money that's spent on food for cocktails when you're the, the little hobnobbing. That you end up with several thousand dollars just to go to this event to get hyped up. And who knows, you might that might help you in your business. I mean, a lot of there's not, it isn't just network marketing where that sort of like conventions happen. But you know, someone might be saying, hey, you're spending a lot of money. Where's the ROI. Oh, you're, you're not aligned my dreams. You're toxic. I need to need to cut you off. But even more importantly, and I'll let you all jump in here is that, and I, in the post that we did, there's a lot of people who said, Hey, I lost friends. I lost some really close friends just because like, I was happy for them that they wanted to do this thing. It just wasn't for me. And mm-hmm. I got cut off. I lost this friendship and it hurt. Mm-hmm. Like that's regardless, even if it's not an MLM, like, that's if you're a Christian, mm-hmm. you shouldn't. Mm-hmm. That's not 
godly behavior. Yeah. Well, it's that's idolatry. That's just, right. That's idolatry. Um, I think just the antidote is just worship God and mm-hmm. keep your head on straight. Right. Just worship God and keep your head on straight. Right. And, you know, I think Joy and I talk a lot about um, we can we're happy to talk about principles, but Joy and I aren't interested in telling you know, people what they can or can't buy or what right. they can and can't be a part of. Like, we're just not interested in doing that. And there's so many things that have to happen at a household level that like, yeah, this is between you and your husband. Mm-hmm. Biblical principle, you can't lie. You can't defraud people. Right. Um, women are easily deceived. Guard your heart. Worship God, not this product. Don't yeah. call sin, not sin. Call sin, sin. So... My challenge to anybody would be, okay, are you by what standard? Are you abiding by these principles? Because mm-hmm. I can't tell. I can't tell. I can't tell you what your daily life looks like. I can't tell you how to spend your money or not. But I do. There is an authority above us that says you can't lie. You can't bear false witness. You can't defraud your neighbor. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, if that's happening, well better figure that out yeah exactly you better figure that out Mm -hmm. um and if you are willing to cut off friendships for this product then i don't even have to tell you you've you're already you've already gone wrong Mm -hmm. you've already gone wrong yeah um and i think i think christians led by the holy spirit will know that not that christians can't sin or fail in this way or can't you know accidentally whatever be guilty um, of doing this. Um, but I can say biblically that that's wrong. Um, and I have no problem saying that because I think scripture says that. So who are you worshiping? What are you worshiping? Um, what are you putting your hope and your trust in? And if you want to tell me, you go ahead and check all these boxes by being in this MLM or by leaving this MLM, that's not up for me to, Mm. You know, I tend to have a pretty black and white. I do have a black and white opinion on yeah. all of this, but I I'm not here to check the boxes for you. Yeah, yeah, and I would I would trust that too. And uh, yeah, I think it's just self government. Like you need to decide. Like you need to take this information. If like you're in this industry, let's think with discernment. You know, I think you need to think also like test all things and understand like the law of attraction. Like I think I haven't by now. There might have an episode I did with John Clash, and he's in this industry a little bit too. But he's He's very much, we had a whole episode on the law of attraction. Like this stuff is so deeply embedded in this industry. So even, you know, even if you're doing like things economically, like in a way that's good and you have a product that's ethical and all that sort of stuff, there's a whole gateway of like new age stuff that just is really there. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. What what are, the, what, what are your, kind of some of your thoughts, Joy, on this whole, on this whole topic? Everything we talked about so far. Um, I think we live in one of the most, uh, we live in an amazing time where if you want to start a business, you can, um, and you will have to work and you will have to invest, um, some money. And I think that creating products and services that solve problems is great. It's the basis of our entire (laughs) economy. Um, but I think the difference between, starting a business and working for yourself is you creating that um, and you creating the product, you creating the service uh, and it's yours and you're, it's uniquely yours um, is different than being sold Mm -hmm. on a product and then being encouraged to sell other people on it and not just on the product. That's actually, I'm not even really talking about being sold on the product. I'm talking about selling your new cushy lifestyle to another person. Um, being by, sold on selling the product. Right. Yes. Um, and that's, uh, there's, there's also, I also think that it's okay to go work for someone else and sell their product. And I don't think either of the things I just said really totally apply economically to an MLM. I think you're talking, you are talking about a different category of a business. And I think that uh, that has left room for lots of things to happen Mm. to people. Um, And I don't, I, I don't know, I guess maybe when I started that statement, I wanted it to be an encouragement that you should work 
Mm. You should, you can accomplish a lot yeah. and you can work really hard and um, you can build something that you're, uh, that mm-hmm. is good mm-hmm. objectively and you can make a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Um, you can make a livable amount of money. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think that some, sometimes what's appealing is that uh, it almost seems like, like they sell, they sell that you're going to be your own man right like it is your business Mm -hmm. but it's also not it's their business um i don't know i think you just have to be careful about what you're being sold on um you have to be careful uh what you're signing up for and just know that there is a in terms of in terms of economics there is a really good profitable way to start your own business and we probably live in a time where that's easier Mm -hmm than anything but if you're if you're joining a business to cut corners and to make money really fast and um because you're sort of like vibing on this buzz that you experienced in a sales party um that's that that is a really good way for your business to not be successful because it's very emotion Mm. driven and um I don't know. I just think it's a, I think there, I think there is a shared responsibility. I think there is a deception happening. And I think there are people that are willing to deceive themselves because everybody wants to be rich quick. And I think that while Christians are responsible to not deceive others, it's also our responsibility to not be deceived. And if things sound too good to be true and our alarm bells are going off, you should, you should acknowledge that and be like, okay, yeah, no, thank you. (laughs) <laughs> well, yeah. Well, Andrew, you can. I want you to jump in at your thoughts, but I think this is also just a principle, like in general, even even outside of MLMs, that you need to, I guess, in some sense, like count the cost, as far as what this, all the, you know, you can be very visionary and have this great vision, but you also need to think practically about the infrastructure as well too. And even like one of my favorite television shows is uh, Kitchen Nightmares mm-hmm. with uh, Gordon Ramsay, where Absolutely. especially the British, I the British, the, especially the, the British so version. Good. Why it, is that show so good? It's great. It's just like, who, who doesn't like to see just a train or like a train, like that train's going to derail it. Let's, I can't take my eyes off of it. <laughs> but a lot of times, you know, you see somebody there and it's, I love, especially the British version, just because that's you see that Gordon is actually giving some like tough love like he really wants these people it's not as much as the you know the commercialized Hell's Kitchen you know crazy personality of Gordon like he genuinely cares for these people he understands he wants them to be successful yeah so yeah. a lot of these people have this very grandiose idea hey I want to cook food I want to have this restaurant but they're not thinking practically about okay how much does my uh, how much does it does it cost to have my menu out every single time? How much how much does it take to pay my staff? How do I keep the morale going? There's there's so many working components as myself even who's worked in food before. It's a even in something that's like Do you more, like cooking food or do you actually want to be a restaurant manager? Right. Because right. it's two different things. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of times people go in, they, they don't realize those things. And I think we can, we can jump into any venture not realizing the infrastructure. And I think a lot of times people were, you kind of jumped in, like you said, at the very beginning and you didn't really even know what you're doing. Like, hey, this is helping my kid and this is just great. Um, and there are a lot of times people are very, they're, they're going in for the wrong reasons. They're not even thinking from an inventory versus, you know, prof cost, you know, lo- profit right. loss, all those sorts of things. So all of a sudden it gets to their taxes and they're like, they're offering to do a part of what they're selling is that they will create this business for you and then give it to you. And it's already this like functioning, flourishing, established, and it's just, that's just not what it takes to yeah. operate a business. And I mean, even just case in point, what you said, like, the amount of money that went into me making eighty three dollars, right. and so there is a way. <sighs> there is a way to delude yourself into thinking, like, just like there. This happens in many ways. You know, you see a product that you don't need that's on sale, and you're like, "Oh, well, I'm going to buy it because I'm saving money." And it's like, but if you don't need it, you're not actually saving you're money. Actually, just you're spending, spending money yeah. eighty dollars <laughs> on that thing that was once a hundred and sixty dollars. Like, right. and so I think that you just. You have to be, you have to be aware of the the lifestyle of the business. And I guess more of what I'm trying to say is that if you want to start something, 
you should start something and it will be very hard and it will take money to do it, but you can do it on your own if you really want to. If you really want to for 10 years and you never do anything, I will suggest you you don't don't want want to. to. (laughs) Um, But that's all I'm saying is it is not a, it's not a like, it's not a, uh, this expedient route to owning your own business. Um, And I think Christians owning our own businesses is a really good thing that we should have more and more and more of. And we should have rich Christians. We should absolutely. um, But yeah, it's not a, I think we like, I, I, yeah, I, I'm the, I really have a problem with the allure Mm. of that. But I, like I said, there's a shared responsibility. The person who sells it is guilty of deception and the person who buys it is guilty of deception. Being deceived. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like in certain cases. And so you're, you, you as the Christian are responsible on whichever side of the fence you're on. Yeah. Uh, you're responsible to be discerning and to not be deceived and you're responsible to not be deceiving others. Yeah. And so either way, you're responsible. Yeah. Andrew, what are some of your thoughts here? I see, I see your, uh, the, the wheels in your head turning virtually uh, over there in Utah. The cyborg, which, 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 the the cyborg the, wheels. The yeah. cyborg wheels. Yeah. The ears, the, <laughs> the microchip. Yeah, I got some electri- <laughs> yeah, the electrical impulses are flowing through my <laughs> microchip sensors right now. No, I, I don't think I can say anything better than, than really what's been said. Uh, it's it's true, man. If, you, if you're a Christian and you're involved in something like this, I, I just suggest t- just take a step back. Uh, look at your life through the lens of scripture. And if there's things that you've done that need to be repented of, repent of those things, you know. Uh, do not look at material possessions as something that can free you uh, from certain situations. I mean, they can in some senses, but if it's built, if your freedom's built upon the backs of enslaving other individuals, uh, it's not a good freedom to have. Uh, your true freedom should be in Christ, uh, first and foremost. Get rich quick schemes. Don't really ever do it for anybody unless someone else is suffering. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And a, and a Christian wants to love God first so that they can accurately love their neighbor. Right. Like Jesus summarizes the full of the law in that love God, love neighbor. Yeah. So if you're lacking and loving your neighbor in some sense, that means your relationship with God is lacking in some sense as well. And you're looking like Summer said, to some form of idolatry to satisfy that. So just take a look back at your life and, uh, whatever you're involved in and try not to deceive others and don't be deceived yourself. I mean, yeah. I, I think that those are great principles. Yeah. And even like I said, even if you're in this industry and let's say like you're an ambassador and like you're in this click and you're, you're a top earner and all this sorts of thing, just ask like, just be calm. Like if you can honestly in your own conscience believe that, you know, what's being sold is, is as ethical and it's good and actually helps people's lives is a good thing. Like great, more power to you. You know, just I would say because I I think that's the one thing too is that in that document in the Lula Rich, is that a lot of the people who are the top earners they were like selling the dream but living this nightmare where they are like exhausted, burnt out. Like it's if like a a good leader is always like you know exactly like where they're at. They're 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 not they don't cut corners. They they tell it like it is. That's what we all look to and aspire to. So I think I would just say for the let them know what it's really like to be an ambassador and tell them like, just be on, make sure you're just telling the truth. And if your company is not comfortable with you telling the truth, well, it's maybe it's not the pl- best place to be because yeah. ultimately this is not, this is just one of those issues. I think why it's so polarizing is because people I'll wrap it up here on this, at least for myself is that people want like us to take a side, like whose team are we on? Like, like bad out. I want you to say, don't, align yourself don't be a part of it don't yes. use the products like that's right. what people want dude i'm on the lord's team i don't care about <laughs> none of that i don't care about none of that and i don't <laughs> like i we don't have we don't have the bandwidth to so see this is how i started putting it on sheologians like the things that i say on sheologians i would prefer you use them to look at yourself yeah instead of looking at everyone else and and that's who I'm talking to when I generated all the thoughts I have on MLMs. I'm looking at myself. I'm not trying to look at everyone else and determine who I need to go talk to. And, mm-hmm. you yeah. know, that's just not, that's not my take mm-hmm. on it. Now, are there times when you have to say things to your friends? Of course, of course. Right. But that is not, that's not why I did this episode today. I am much more of a fan of you looking yeah. At you. 
before yeah. I know. other people. Look, look at you and yeah, I don't, when you bring up a right. team, it's like, I don't, I don't ever want to be on a team outside of this lives up to scripture. Yeah. Like this lives up to both general and special revelation. So if I'm going to comment on what it means to be a woman, it either has to be from the Bible or from God's revealed mm-hmm. will in nature. Like these are the two places, right? And like, maybe this doesn't seem to fit, but it's just like, why am I not a vegetarian? Cause God gave us animals to eat. Like, it's just that it, for me, it's just like that it's right there in the text. Like I don't, it's in the text. So you can't defraud your neighbor. Right. It's in the text. Yeah, like right. I don't need. And it's like, if you're looking at me and you're like, well, I'm not defrauding my neighbor. Well, Great. that's what I, I meant don't by, have yeah. anything to right. say then. So, j- j- <laughs> right. And my, you. and our assumption, <laughs> our assumption should be like to the people that we're sitting in pews with, unless we really know otherwise explicitly, <sighs> our assumption should be that they're also on Lib- that Bible team. Yes. <laughs> if you're walking into church with them and they have are involved with an MLM, like it is unless they have explicitly said, like, I lie to my customers, then your assumption is gracious and they have done the work to determine them and their husband have worked to determine that what they're doing is okay. And you know what? Sometimes people change their minds and it's not up to you to make sure they change them faster than God. Right. And all, yeah, so in other words, where I think you said it perfectly is that this this falls under the jurisdiction of self government. So I don't want to use our collaboration to, as a club to wield over like one side or the other. Yeah, I think you just need to look at this whole thing holistically, which I think we've done, and hopefully you'll have some guiding general principles about uh, how to think all of this. Uh, yeah, well, this, yeah. and yes, self government, but obviously where the government has said this company is lying and this is not true, that's something to consider but right. again that's yeah. something that you need to take the initiative to be aware of right and again so there is always self-government in this conversation and um it makes sense why there are mlms that leave a bad taste in your mouth it makes sense like i totally get it you mean if their products taste bad <laughs> also that <laughs> taste terrible have you ever tried to eat a lularoe legging because <laughs> They say they're like soft as butter, but I can tell you right now. They do not spread well. <laughs> they are I would not, not blend that in with my coffee in the morning. They're actually not buttery. <laughs> Bulletproof <so> LuLaRoe. <laughs> LuLaRoe's lying about the butter t- flavor in their pants. That's all I have to say. There I, you uh, go. Yeah. Same. Well, this has been, uh, this is actually our first ever collab though, just one beginning to end collaboration. No like, one made it this far. No, Are no you still this here? Far. It took you four days. Yeah. <laughs> you said you wanted the MLM episode and you got it. You got it. <laughs> well, this is also the next, if we do a collaboration, you will, you both are about to jump into the era that Andrew and I jumped into. I have no idea what you're talking about. Well, Andrew is the vir- my virtual co-host. No, I don't she's, acknowledge. She is not addressing the fact that I'm moving. <laughs> we oh, don't she's not. Yet. No. Okay. No. Well, <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I'm looking for that is a May summer problem, <laughs> it's and not May since yet. it is currently May summer, April, yeah. Um, I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. <laughs> not sure. Are you sort of like summer of the season? Summer you or? No, like May until May, we I don't have this problem actually. Uh, Joy moving is not an issue. Yeah, it's not May. Hmm. Well, May summer is a different person who will be fielding yeah. the yeah. emotions. I and... live in the moment, Jerry. So <laughs> yeah. I don't know what I don't live in the past. I don't live in the future. I live in this yeah. moment. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well. I'll, I'll live in my own moment here then. Yeah, you <laughs> enjoy this moment. I, I will. I'll I'm enjoy not it. actually going to participate in <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. She like turns. Yeah. But chair. honestly, I, I think I said this earlier. Is that joy? It's it's I it's I don't know. I was thinking I was like talking with Candy the other day about it, and I and Candy's like, "Jerry, you can tear it." I was like, "No, no, no." My wife was like, <laughs> "Yeah, you are a little bit." But honestly, like, yeah. do you think of like? 2009 like we first hung out you think did think about even the circumstances into like how we met and all we've been through with the different small groups and different yeah. churches the ups and downs with different friendships but and here we are like the fact that like you're moving it's like oh my gosh like this is yeah we've known each other like pre pot like pre all this and like i know i'm a little sad so this has been a little bit bittersweet but this has been fun but like it just uh 
Yeah. yeah, we're I'm at the part of moving to where you you're starting to hit your like lasts. Mm-hmm. But um you know, I think it uh, um to try to well, perhaps I'm uh staying detached for my own good as well, just mm-hmm. like summer. <laughs> yeah. Um <laughs> but I think that uh uh not to get too like uh but um yeah. You know, it gives you a perspective to think about, like, do you actually believe in eternity? Do you believe that, like, you will be with, like, people forever? Forever. Yeah. And so uh, mm. I believe that. And this yeah. has given, this has a, been a huge opportunity for me to understand that. Mm-hmm. I do mean that when I say that. It's not just, like, a little thing you say. Like, yeah. You know, like when you say to the person, you're like, let's hang out soon. And it's like, it's never going to work. It's never going to happen. <laughs> yeah. That's not how I'll see you in eternity mm-hmm. is. That's like a real true yeah. thing, mm. you know. But you could go 10,000 years without seeing someone technically. Right. I mean, yeah. In eternity. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of us there, but we'll have a lot but of time. But would it be years? Because the sun... I don't know how it's all going to happen. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. Are we all going to be like... Hmm. Oh hey, it's been like five thousand years since I've seen you. <laughs> or it's gonna be like, what have you been up to? It's gonna be like Narnia, <laughs> where all of a sudden, like, I'm talking to you for five minutes, and I come back and talk to someone else in heaven. And it's like, oh, it's been fifteen thousand years. I, thought, I could have sworn it was five minutes. So well, the question is, how long? That's how this episode is felt for <laughs> you all. I was gonna say, some people are like, I already get it. I, I already, already understand that time. So my question, so in my this que- episode. So Joy, I have a question for you. Then I just realized something. I'm like, oh my goodness. So my question is, is there spacing out in heaven? And if I space out in heaven, how long? How much time are you losing? (laughs) How much time would I lose? When Jerry spaces out in eternity, it's going to be a million years. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) With his own, no, that can't happen. A million years with your own thoughts, no. That sounds like hell, actually. (laughs) What you just described was hell, I'm pretty sure. That's like some sort of Stanley Kubrick film or something. (laughs) Something horrible. Yeah. But <laughs> okay, I'm but ending it. No, we're, we're no. ending it. But... <laughs> Jerry, um, this was a great crossover, and it's over. And we have to accept that it's over. If the we keep talking, over. Joy will still move. Like yeah. just because we've kept going doesn't mean the move isn't happening. Yeah, um, yeah. she gets it. So <laughs> you can leave us a voicemail at four seven zero four six five zero four seven five. We're Sheologians. That's cultish. Yes. That's we, I enjoyed this. This I is great. It. Always a fun time. I'm on my way to Chick-fil-A. And I will really try. I feel like, so how many? We made five, six, five. Yeah, this, five. Is, this, is our fifth, this is our fifth official So crossover. I remember four out of five. Which is a great. At least as far as I know. We did great. just record this one. Yeah. So we'll see how long it takes for me to be like, we did MLMs. We did MLMs. Okay. But I'm doing pretty good, I feel like. Yeah, you no, know, you, you, only you... one that I literally have no memory of. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to send you those episodes. Okay. All right. See you guys. See you guys later.